La revolta turca contra la privatització del Parc Taksim es va veure envoltada d'una escalada repressiva sense precedents, on la llibertat d'expressió també es va veure tocada. De visita per Barcelona, Michael Dickinson, escritor i artista resident a Estambul, ens explica les vivències pels jutjats i calabossos turcs per declarar-se autor d'una caricatura del primer ministre Erdogan amb un cos de gos. Tota una filosofia de vida desobedient es desplega en aquesta entrevista. Hello, Michael. Um, this is Michael Dickinson, and uh, a very old friend of mine who's just arrived Not in... very old, I'm only 63. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one year older than me, uh, I have to say that. Sorry, I was bad. Um, has just arrived in Catalonia uh, for the first time from Turkey. In fact, he has been expelled from Turkey by the police. What happened? Why did they throw you out of Turkey, Michael? Jumped on me because I was telling fortunes in the street at that time. In fact, I have my fortunes here if you want to have a look. Yeah, I'd love to. You could do one. So it was for but telling fortunes well, that they, they threw you out of Turkey? they came and they said, move, or you can't do that here. And I said, okay, I'm moving. And then one of them said, I remember you. You were um, in a protest last week and you were shouting something. And I suddenly thought, yes, I was shouting something. Can you remember what I was shouting? I was shouting, Hukumet Istifa! I shouted it really loudly in the street. Hukumet Istifa means government resign. And it was part of the Gezi Park protests. If you remember in the summer, the president, the prime minister of Turkey wanted to close this park and make a shopping mall there. And this brought out huge protests on the street. And one of the chants was Hukumet Istifa. And so the police were wanting to get you already because of this? Uh... Well, yeah, the, he had seen me before, and but I shouldn't, or should I? I shouted it at that moment, and well, I was arrested. That was the end of your career. In How yeah. long were you in Turkey? 27 years. What? Yeah. Wow. I went, I was that the first problem you'd had with the police? No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, certainly not. Um, when I had my big problem with, in Turkey with the Turkish Prime Minister, I was charged with insulting him. You insulted the Prime Minister? Well, I didn't think I was insulting him. It was just like I made a collage picture of him with a dog's body and George Bush putting a rosette on him. This picture was shown in an exhibition in Istanbul. It was an anti-war uh, exhibition, so I okay. decided to add something about Turkey because there was nothing there about Turkey. So I put this picture there one evening. And the next day I came back and all the pictures had been removed. And I said, what happened to my pictures? And they said, oh, did you do? Uh -oh. And they said, the police came last night. They said, who did this picture? Uh -oh. so the whole exhibition was closed down. The whole exhibition, no. But well, in fact, it was actually because all the organizers were arrested, taken to the police station and oh. interviewed and said, so I went to the guy's trial and I made another picture of it again with a dog's body, uh -huh. with an American flag holding him on a leash. He's eating a pile of dollars, and his tail is an American cruise missile. <laughs> and, um, it's great. It's well, brilliant. I was going to show that to the judge to say, look, I did it. But he, the trial was cancelled because the guy didn't turn up. So when I went out of the court, there was a television camera there and uh, a guy waiting for an interview. So I opened this picture and showed it to him. Suddenly guards came out of the court, Oof. grabbed me and pulled me in and after that I was had a little secret trial at night. I was taken to a very notorious prison and oh. held there for three days. I didn't know what was happening then. What are the prisons like in, in Turkey? Well, you know, they are prisons everywhere are shitholes basically. Oh. But um, when I was escorted to my cell, there were twelve other guys in the cell and they were having a meal at the time, and the light was sort of all lemonish, and, and they said, what are you here for? And I said, I made a picture of the Turkish Prime Minister as a dog. And they said, oh, congratulations, <laughs> come in, eat with us. And they were really kind to me and friendly. Ah, good. You yeah. had a good experience with, with the cellmates. With the least. cellmates as well. But after three days, police arrived, and at night, actually, and said, Dickinson, out. And my cellmates thought, Ah, you're being released and so did I at first 
but they put me into a van and they drove me across the bridge to the other side, outside a much worse prison, which has a much worse reputation. And the police got out, the driver was in the front, and I thought, Jesus, nobody knows where I am. I don't know what's going to happen. What, uh, I'm not, I've got to get some news to somebody. How can I? And I thought, if the door opens, I'm going to open it. I'm run. And run. And it opens. So I jumped out. It was like 12 o'clock at night. I started running through the street. The police came out and shouting, stop, stop. And then he shot his gun at me. He shot his gun? <laughs> it didn't hit me, but it went flying past me. You know? And I thought, geez. And I ran down the street, but it was a dead end. And uh -uh. caught me and beat me up a bit and put me, handcuffed me, put me back in the van and they took me to another prison but yeah it was a horrible experience but then finally the British consulate discovered me and they said oh we didn't know you were here and I said can you get me out and they said we can't do anything uh, but we can bring you some stuff what would you like and I said bring me the complete works of Shakespeare because you know, I've got nothing to read here and at least I can read that. So the next day they came with the complete works of Shakespeare and gave it to me. And while we were talking, a policeman came and handed a piece of paper and it said, Dickinson out, must leave the country by the end of the month. And, um, and so I thought, thank God. And I did leave the country by the end of the month for a holiday. So two weeks later I came back uh -oh. to Istanbul. I thought everything's finished, you know. But you the, thought <laughs> <laughs> there was a knock at my door and it was a policeman with a new piece of paper saying my trial was to begin for this second picture of insulting the Oh my God. So that trial went on for four years, off, on, off, on. The first judge said, um, I will ask for professors of art to come and <laughs> decide whether this picture is art or insult, uh -huh. but they didn't turn up. They just wrote, we, are, we don't know about that. And eventually the first judge acquitted me, uh -huh. said, Turkey wants to join the European Union. This kind of art is not a crime in Europe, so I am going to acquit Incredible. All over one picture. Of all, yeah, and I thought, it's all over. But it wasn't all over because six months later, the government said he shouldn't have been acquitted. We are going to reopen the trial, uh. and so I had a, a second trial. But that time, I ran away from Turkey. I thought, forget it. I'm not going to do go through that again. I but left all. Why did you come to? Why did you choose? For decided to go to Syria, and I thought, how can I get to Syria cheaply? And then I remembered there's a train from Istanbul to Syria, so I went back into Turkey. And I was staying in a little hotel, and I got a phone call. Your new trial opens tomorrow. So by fate, I was in Istanbul. I went to the second trial. I was found guilty of insulting the prime minister. Uh -huh. And I was charged with, uh, I, they said I would go to prison for 14 months or pay this big fine, which I refused to do, or do not make another picture of the Turkish prime minister for five years. <laughs> so that. After all that. that when I know you 35 years ago, you had a very famous moment in the cathedral of St. Paul's of Cathedral, London. yes. What happened there? Well, that was part of the, what was it, 1985 or 1984, wow. the Stop the City uh, demonstration. This was a time when protesters came and took over the city of London to protest against the banks and the against the capitalist system really yeah. stop the city i was there i, I didn't actually take part of my, in I, w I was watching the protests and things but in the evening i met a friend outside saint paul's cathedral and i said what do you want to do there's lots of protests going on she said i want to see inside saint paul's cathedral i've never been inside before so we went in and um, it was about four o'clock or something a, a verger went up into the pulpit and said we will now be shortly closing if people could make their way to the exit and he came down and I thought right so I walked up into the pulpit and said ladies and gentlemen you may have noticed protest going on in the streets outside you don't know what it's about I want to tell you it is about the city of London is the great Satan or something like that <laughs> or it, the banks here they, they control they are causing the problems in the world that blah 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 and then I said, OK, I've finished, and I want to come down and leave. And I was walking towards the exit, uh, 
the verger came in and said, that's the one, and four policemen came and grabbed, you. grabbed me, oh dear, arrested oh dear. me. And the same thing happened to you, I believe, in 27 years later, in outside the parliament. Which part? Oh, uh, you mean, uh, yeah, last, uh, in just 20, last year. In 2011, actually, when they, uh, they were all standing, when 11 o'clock strikes, the silence begins. I was living in a tent in Parliament Square then, because there was a, uh, a protest which was happening a long time ago. So when the clock started, I counted for 10 seconds, and then I shouted, no more war! Three times I shouted this, and then I went into my tent, and then the silence finished, and a policewoman came and said, uh, come out, sir, I'm afraid we are going to have to arrest you because somebody has complained about I'm you. afraid we're going to have to, how English? <laughs> yeah, well, more or less. She said, why did you, why did you shout? I said, God told me to. <laughs> 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 and so, so, and do you think they heard you shouting? I think, yes, they did, because I actually looked on YouTube and uh, I could see them were standing there and suddenly you heard this voice echoing in the distance and there was Kate, what's her name, Princess Kate, uh, Kate and she was looking down and her eyes sort of went up, so she heard it anyway. Yeah, so, so I didn't go to the trial because it was in January and I was arrested in November and I didn't want to stay around in cold England, so I went back to Turkey. So the next, <laughs> Dangerous move. the next time I came back to England, uh, the end of that year, the police were waiting for me at the airport, oh. and they arrested me, they took me to the court. Oh. They said, your trial will be next week, and the trial was for... Uh, shouting in public? Not shout. well, it, um, offensive language likely to cause uh, distress. So I pleaded not guilty because I said no more war is not offensive language. And there is no rule which says you can't speak during the three minute, two minute silence. So they, they decided to actually cancel the trial because I think <laughs> they were afraid that I would say more about... Uh, you won. Yeah. In the, Congratulations, yeah. Michael. Thank you for that. And welcome to Barcelona. Oh yeah, now why do I come to Barcelona? Come because here. I chose...